Right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. We really appreciate your support. My name is Christy Jack, and I'm the band director here at Canoe Creek K-8. Um, I also teach chorus. And thank you. Um, I also teach chorus and music technology courses here um, throughout the performance tonight. You're going to see a progression uh, from our youngest ensembles to uh, up to our older ensembles, uh, more experienced ensembles. Um, so you're going to kind of see the performances keep getting better and better as the evening goes on. Um, and you'll be able to see and hear the growth happening right before you. So it's very, um, very cool, very exciting. Um, between each large ensemble, there will be some solo and small group performances. Um, this is great for beginners to get comfortable with playing uh, in front of others and in front of audiences um, at a young age so that they get comfortable with that. Um, for my older students, I let them pick what they're going to play. So that's always interesting. Um, yeah. So um, I would like to thank uh, a few people. We actually have uh, Heather Cahoon, our new Osceola School Board Chair here this evening. Thank you so much for coming out. We appreciate your support. And of course, um, our administration, thank you guys so much for everything that you guys do. The entire admin team here is incredible. So um, I always say it, in, it takes a village and everybody here, is, it, that's, that's truly how it is here. Uh, thank you to the teachers that volunteered their time to stay here tonight because we have 200 students performing for you tonight. <laughs> And uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with monitoring 200 students by myself. I mean, I probably could, but I, I appreciate the teachers that stayed uh, tonight to help um, with the backstage stuff. So all of the backstage stuff that's happening is also being manned by our music technology students uh, tonight, whether it be the um, sound, lighting, um, transitional things that are happening on the stage. Uh, they're getting trained in how to operate all of the, those uh, types of equipment, uh, types of pieces. Um, the only other thing I'm going to say before we get started is uh, please make sure you do silence your cell phones. And we just ask that um, if you, know, you have uh, something that is causing any kind of noise during the performance, if you would, just please kindly step outside for um, a moment until you can get the noise to kind of calm down. Maybe it's a, a little one or something like that. We would appreciate it. It's very distracting to the performers um, and, and they have to really stay focused. So we appreciate, appreciate your cooperation with that. So before you here on our stage, we have our fifth grade beginning band. So... Yeah, they're a good looking group, right? Um, so here at Canoe Creek K-8, we do have a unique opportunity to offer a fifth grade band class to students who wish to participate. Um, and it really is a special thing. Um, by starting in fifth grade, students are able to advance a bit sooner. And by the time they reach seventh and eighth grade, they're playing at quite a high level uh, musically. So if they practice at home regularly, of course. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh, practice cards are still due tomorrow, guys, by the way. <laughs> Forget about that. Okay. Um, so the goal in fifth grade band is to begin learning how to properly hold the instrument, how to create correct tone and sound on the instrument, uh, begin learning the first few notes. Uh, so very simple things. Uh, I always say, once they make it past Mary Had a Little Lamb, it's all downhill. So we can just, you know, uh, the, first, the first bit of beginning band can be a little tedious. Uh, they're like, well, I'm blowing this note for like a long time. It doesn't seem very exciting. But once they get past Mary Had a Little Lamb, man, they just, they fly. So um, it's fun times. Um, so please help me welcome to the stage for the first time, the fifth grade beginning band.
So this last piece that they're going to play for you is an actual recognizable tune. Um, <laughs> Au Claire de Lune.
All right, next on our stage is our middle school beginning band. So during my time as a band director, uh, I've always included the song Jingle Bells 
on our holiday concerts. Um, on our ensemble size, when we play Jingle Bells, is typically between 40 and 50 members in the middle school band. However, we're developing a unique situation here um, at Canoe Creek K-8 because most of our students have a uh, band in fifth grade. So uh, the middle school band, beginning band, ends up being a bit of a smaller class size, but it works out well because we actually have grades six through eight in that class, and it's just students that have never had the opportunity to take band yet. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that we still offer that for the middle school students um, so that when they get ready to go to high school, uh, they still have an option to participate in band if they you know, wanted to learn how to play an instrument. Um, so this year we are going to perform Jingle Bells for you, although it's not typically a large ensemble like we're used to. Um, this, this small class does, does very well with it. So we hope you enjoy this winter classic, Jingle Bells.
right. We're now welcoming our concert band to the stage. Our concert band consists of middle school students uh, ranging in grades six through eight because some of the fifth graders that we had last year have now moved up and in the, in the sixth grade, uh, instead of being in a beginning band, they're now in an intermediate band. So that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, um, getting them that head start on things. So uh, their main goal this year for concert band is for them to finish their first method book and pass off their first four scales. Uh, once they accomplish this, then they will meet the requirements to join symphonic band. Um, so tonight they will be performing two pieces for you. Um, one, the first piece is entitled Acropolis by Matthew R. Putnam. This piece depicts the majesty and mystique of the famous Athens, Greece landmark. The Acropolis is located on a limestone hill above, high above the city of Athens. The term Acropolis literally means high city and is one of the most ancient archeological sites in the world. Over the centuries, it has been home to kings, a citadel, a mythical home to the gods, and a tourist attraction. It has withstood bombardment, earthquakes, vandalism, and is yet still standing as a proud reminder of the rich history of Greece. Matthew Putnam, or the composer, is currently teaching middle school band in Polk County, North Carolina, and has recently received Teacher of the Year. Um, the second piece we're going to play for you is entitled Band on the Housetop by Timothy Lowest. The composer is very creative in this work, and based on the original Benjamin Hanby's Up on the Housetop, uh, it manages to highlight each section of the band separately and then together. So each musician understands how the various layers of music begin to interlock uh, beyond just playing the same unison melodies together. So Timothy Lois, the composer, is currently a band director in the state of Illinois and is an ASCAP award-winning composer as he advances music education through his writing. Before we play these two pieces, kids don't know I'm going to do this, but um, this year we started implementing what we call band officers within the band, which helps to create student leadership um, in them. And it also helps because when you have a band that's 150 people, um, sometimes I need a little help. So if you are a band officer this year, would you please stand up? So we have band officers in concert band, and then we also have some in symphonic band. They probably don't know I'm going to call on them either because they're backstage, so they'll find out soon enough. Um, so we hope that you enjoy uh, these two selections.
Thank you. I'd like to welcome our symphonic band to the stage. Um, that The piece we just opened up with was entitled Galaxy Defenders by John M. Pasternak. He is one of my favorite composers for young bands, uh, and it kind of depicts a virtual space battle between triumphant heroes and aliens. Uh, so it's a fun little piece to open up with. Um, before I introduce the next two selections, um, I just want to take a moment to talk about the additional events that this ensemble is going to be participating in this school year. Um, the Florida Bandmasters Association, FBA, is an organization that has a deep history uh, spanning across many generations uh, of band traditions and events. Um, and the, in February of this year, our students began participating in what we call solo and ensemble contest. Um, and I'm happy to say that all seven of the students that participated last February received the uh, highest performance rating, which is a superior. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Um, in March of this school year, uh, we, the entire symphonic band will be participating in another FBA hosted event called Concert Band MPA. So it's basically the same thing, but instead of individual, we're now doing the full band. So this will be the first year that Canoe Creek uh, will kind of be put on that map. So uh, they're going to get to go and represent us um, in doing that. And we hope to uh, bring home some superior ratings. One of the skills that we're about to be working on after this concert is something called sight reading. And that's when you learn to play something for the very first time and you've never seen it before. Um, and that's one of the things that they are adjudicated on um, at uh, Music Performance Assessment, also known as MPA. Um, so we're going to be working on that as well. One of the pieces that we're going to play for you tonight, uh, we do plan on performing in March at MPA. Um, and the pieces are rated by a grade level. So, for example, the concert band that just played, uh, those two pieces were what we consider just under grade one level. Um, so tonight, uh, the symphonic band will be performing uh, one grade one for you. And then after this concert, I plan on giving them a grade two. So they will have more challenges to come. Uh, we are required to play a grade two and two grade ones. That's the minimum requirement. Um, so we are going to uh, meet that expectation, and they'll be working on that uh, starting after this concert. Um, the next thing I kind of want to just talk about real quick is uh, our band officers. They don't know that I'm going to do this, <laughs> but if you are a band officer this year, will you please stand up? So um, we have two band captains, one woodwind and one brass. Uh, we also have a band librarian, band secretary. Um, we have a, a logistics a captain as well who is in charge of helping fix things when they're broken and things like that. So everybody has their, their own responsibility. And um, it's, uh, it's really, really cool to see them come in a leadership position uh, and grow through the program. Um, so we have two more pieces to play for you tonight. Um, the first piece is entitled Angel Echoes by Larry Clark. As the title implies, the piece uses a lot of echo effects throughout. Um, the piece begins with a lush woodwind statement of subtle angel theme, uh, which is used throughout the piece and eventually leads to a climactic Point in the music and you'll really be able to tell when that is. Then the fast section ensues with a more fanfare like presentation of the theme. Larry Clark is a native to Central Florida and can, uh, currently resides in Lakeland, Florida. He has written some of the most popular music performed by bands of all levels. Uh, he prides himself on producing music that is not only intriguing to young students, but that has a high playability factor. And then the last piece we'll play is entitled Christmas Train by Gene Milford. Uh, this piece invites you to come along with us on a trip 
whether to the North Pole or around the Christmas tree, trains are a part of the holidays. Uh, with train effects and happy North Pole uh, sounds, um, you'll hear the melody interspersed with familiar carols. So we invite you to count how many different holiday tunes that you can recognize from that last song. All right, and then, um, let's see, yep, yeah, okay. All right, so after, after you guys perform, you don't know about this either, but um, as soon as we play our last piece tonight, I'm going to invite a special surprise guest speaker to come up to the microphone. Okay, so don't go down and do your solos until after the surprise guest comes up to the microphone.
Thank you so much. This group has worked very, very hard. This is our top performing group um, in the school, and they're just getting started. Um, after they leave middle school, we certainly hope that their band experience has been fun um, and that they would consider um, going on to high school. So I have invited the band director from Harmony High School to come and just speak to you for just a few quick moments um, about what kind of opportunities uh, await for them in high school. So let's welcome Mr. Jordan Phillips. Thank you and good evening everyone. My name is Jordan Phillips and I'm the director of bands at Harmony High School. And believe me when I say that some of the strongest students I have in my program are alumni of this program. Could we all give Miss Jack a huge hand for how she's prepared these wonderful performances? Now, Ms. Jack has asked me to come here to speak briefly about the opportunities for your students after they graduate from this program. Now, the Harmony High School Band is a comprehensive music education program. We've got over 120 students. We have two concert bands, like the groups you've seen here, two jazz ensembles, percussion, color guard, and all of our students take part in the Sound of the Stampede marching band, which entertains our football audiences in the fall. If you have any questions about what lies after this for your students and what opportunities they have in high school music wherever they go, please feel free to talk to me after the concert. I will be here. Um, thank you for supporting music education. Thank you for supporting your students. And thank you for trusting us with them in this really pivotal time. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the concert. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Um, I did have the unique opportunity to uh, work with Mr. Phillips' band over the summer. Um, he turned out his drumline tech uh, was not available last minute, so uh, I went over there. Uh, I used to teach high school for many years, so I had some experience with that, and they were just relaunching their drumline uh, for the first year, so this year. So um, I really enjoyed that, and I have to say, yeah. So I also got to say, I, I really enjoyed working with Mr. Phillips, and uh, your band is just absolutely top notch. So, class all the way. Loved it, enjoyed it. So, um, great program, and, and you're growing immensely as well. So, um, it's, if you ever get an opportunity to go over and hear his band, highly recommend it. And you have a concert coming up, right? Right. Um, we have a concert next Wednesday, the 13th, 6 p.m., Harmony High School Auditorium. It is all of instrumental music, band, orchestra, guitar, jazz, percussion. We do it all, so come hear us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. Phillips. Um, before I, uh, while I have the soloists, you can go ahead and, and step down while they're walking down. I also want to say um, we are launching our Band Boosters Parent Support Program this year as well. Um, and the boosters are over here um, collecting donations. Um, and we are getting our, our boosters launched this year um, and starting in January, once they get their 501c3, um, we will be doing a big fundraiser. Uh, I spoke with the gentleman in charge of InstaRaise um, earlier this week. And uh, after telling him about our community and the support that we have here and how many students we have in each program, uh, he predicts that we can probably uh, earn around $25,000 um, by the end of this school year for the band. Um, and that's going to be through the band boosters um, once they get their um, tax exempt and all of that uh, information. Uh, one of the projects that we also uh, want to do that we've spoke with administration about is um, fixing the stage a bit. There really should be some draping um, back behind the stage instead of just the white walls um, because acoustically you want your sound to head out into the crowd. Um, and we might fix a few of the lights and, and things like that. You can see it's a little bit dark down here in the front. So these are some projects that um, we want to work on uh, with the money that we do earn um, as well as instrument maintenance. Um, I do want to thank um, Commissioner Ricky Booth um, he gave us a grant this year for $1,500, and we were able to buy 36 new music stands. So thank you, Commissioner Booth, for that. We really, really appreciate it. 
we had 25 music stands and 150 kids. So that doesn't, doesn't quite equate. So thank you so much uh, for the support there. All right, and without further ado, let's finish the show.
All right, we're gonna close the evening out here. Almost on schedule, pretty pretty much. Okay, good, happy about that. All right, so um, this is our Soaring Voices Middle School Chorus. All right, and I get to teach all of these guys in one class period um, each, each day of the week. So I enjoy working with the full group. Um, in past years, we kind of had them split, so it was a little more challenging, but that really works well for the schedule to have them all at the same time. All right, this evening, our first piece for you that we're going to sing is a well-known selection among the vocal community. It's titled Charlottetown, um, arranged by Emily Crocker. It's based on an early American folk tune that was developed during the Civil War period. This arrangement of the tune is pretty light and fun, and it allows for the two parts to kind of play off of each other as they move back and forth. So we hope you enjoy Charlottetown.
All right. Uh, the next piece we're going to sing for you um, is entitled Love Can Build a Bridge. And uh, it's going to touch on what music is really all about. And that is evoking emotions. Whether we feel sadness, anger, happiness, peace, healing, or perhaps hope. These are all emotions that music can evoke within the human spirit. Our Canoe Creek K-8 family has experienced, hold on. we've experienced some loss this year. A lot of us have in different ways. And it's brought some tough days for a lot of us. However, <clears throat> excuse me, the love within this community has helped us to stand together and to find ways to build a bridge between what's been lost and where we are now. Excuse me. So I felt this piece um, would be good to pay tribute to those we've lost and to those who have also experienced loss this year. And I'm very grateful for this school community because they come together like none other I've seen. So love truly does build a bridge.
All right. All right, so for our final selection of the evening, I have invited a guest musician to join us. And uh, we're fortunate to have several staff members here who do play instruments or sing. And uh, I make it a point each year to find them somehow. I, uh, I seek them out. <laughs> um, and so this next piece, I have asked Mr. Keyless, one of our science teachers, to join us. So it turns out he is a Latin percussionist. Uh, he also has his own Latin band, and I'm sure he'd be glad to tell you their schedule if you want to care to go out and hear them perform. Uh, sounds like you guys are pretty good, though. Um, and so I've asked Mr. Keyless if he would join us on this last piece, which is entitled A Latin American Christmas. Okay, and we also have uh, maracas and a clavis part that Go ahead and come down, ladies. Okay, they're going to join him as well and do some uh, Latin percussion for you. Um, before we dismiss, after this last piece, we have one more surprise. Okay? Um, so don't run off just yet. We have one more. It's really quick, I promise. So after this song, don't run off just yet.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please stand if you're able and join us in a holiday sing-along.
All right, thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. We hope, we wish you happy holidays. Uh, you are free to take your 